Hey, welcome back once again, everybody. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. And I come at you whenever I'm coming at you with two questions to help you as you prepare for your CISSP exam. So here comes question number one. You got a little problem. Uh, your web application server uh, is running code that makes it vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, it is currently not feasible for you to rewrite that code. My question for you is, given that particular circumstance, which of these answer choices is the best solution to your problem? Click pause, give those a read, as always, lots of words, and um, then we'll talk it through. Answer choice number one says we should require all server traffic to be encrypted and that will fix our problem, and that could not be farther from the truth. So uh, encrypting all your traffic is a wonderful thing, but it is not going to fix an issue with cross-site scripting uh, vulnerability. So, no. The only thing that's going to do is have the cross-site scripting attacks that are occurring be transmitted across the network nice and encrypted, which helps nobody. Choice number two says you should disable form submission and search functionality on the web app. Um, no. <laughs> uh, I, that's, that's a terrible idea there's a pretty good chance that the use of forms and search functionality might be a pretty heavy component of what your web app's doing for you or your ability to interact with it. So if you to go in and just start turning stuff off, uh, should not be the first thing that you rush to go in and do. So uh, let's seriously hope that that's not the right answer. Answer choice number three says you can install a network intrusion detection system to monitor for cross-site scripting attacks. That sounds fancy. Okay. And there are certainly network-based intrusion detection systems that could detect them but things kind of end right there. They detect them. They don't necessarily do anything to protect you against them or from them. So uh, I'm seriously doubting that a network-based intrusion detection system is the best answer on this list. So we continue to search. All right, how about you install a web application firewall in between the clients and the server and have it act as a reverse proxy? Yes, that's what web application firewalls do, is they intercept requests and look for bad things like SQL injection and cross-site scripting. And if there, they can neutralize them or prevent them. So very much so that is a viable solution, particularly when you're dealing with servers that say uh, don't have any or, or can't be fixed, like what appears to be in our situation that we have right now, um, or maybe they're older and you know I can't be fixed for that and maybe it's not that the code can't be fixed you just can't fix it right now or maybe that you just can't fix it at all um, so in that application using this web application firewall in between the clients and the server can act as a mechanism of protection in this circumstance the request comes to the web application firewall it inspects it and then if it's okay it can go in and basically retrieve the content and then forward it back to the client which makes it a reverse proxy um, it is also perfectly plausible, although we don't say so in this example, uh, that the web application firewall logic is actually installed on the server itself. It doesn't necessarily have to be an appliance, but uh, in this circumstance, it is. All right, the last answer choice, which we already know is not going to be the right answer choice, says to install a stateful firewall and only allow established connections to TCP port 443. That all sounds really nice and fancy. However, it's not going to do anything to help protect you from cross-site scripting attacks. So no, don't do that either. In this example, the best answer choice is to make use of a web application firewall. All right, question number two. Which of the following are generally not included in business impact analysis timeframe assessments? Um, I want you to pick two answers from that list, click pause, think about it, click play, we'll talk it out. All right, the two answer choices that you are looking for on this question are MTBF, which is mean time between failures or mean time before failure, um, and MTBSI, mean time between system incidents or service incidents. Um, uh, those two values are generally not included in business impact analysis considerations. Uh, MTBF is going to go in and give you basically a measure of how long you can expect a system to be up before it's going to go down again. Um, and in, in many respects serves as a measure of, of how long something should work before it needs to be either replaced or serviced. 
uh, MTBSI is a measure of the total amount of time between two different service incidents. So you have a service incident, something happens, and then there's however much time progresses before it's detected and then fixed and then the actual service is restored and then everything is, is operating normally again and then the junk breaks again. Okay, MTBSI is a measure of that. So um, that's all well and good. Neither of those, however, are uh, typically included in BIA or business impact assessment or business impact analysis uh, considerations. That means that the other three that are on this list are uh, the first of which is maximum tolerable downtime, MTD. Um, maximum tolerable downtime is effectively a measure of time that specifies the total amount of time that a system could be unavailable before it, in essence, became catastrophic to the organization or you know, that the organization couldn't achieve its mission, uh, if you will, whether that mission is making money or saving the, you know, protecting the country or what have you. Um, that's what the MTD is, and so nothing should exceed the MTD. Uh, the other values are RTO, recovery time objective, and RPO, recovery point objective. Recovery time objective is the amount of time it's going to take to recover after the incident has been detected. So we've detected it and we've taken the steps necessary to go in and identify or to go in and correct the problem, how much time should that be? And one thing that we can say with recovery time objectives is, is that it should always be less than the minimum, maximum tolerable downtime. Um, and it should really not come too close to your maximum tolerable downtime because that doesn't leave you a lot of room for error. So if you had an MTD of say 48 hours, um, you might go in and have a RTO of say 24 or 36 hours or something like that. But the closer that the recovery time objective gets to the maximum tolerable downtime, um, the more danger you are flirting with in terms of something really catastrophic happening when and if these uh, outages occur. Recovery point objective is uh, really dealing with to what moment in time can you get back to. So uh, this is really kind of easy to think about when we talk about the idea of having backups of your data. If you run backups on your data, say, you know, every night at 2 a.m., and users come to work and start interacting with data and then say around noon, there's something fails, you know, some outage occurs and it causes a loss of data, to what point in time can you get back? Uh, your recovery point objective will go in and describe that. And with the example I just gave, it was you know, back to two o'clock in the morning, which means that there's gonna be data loss. The work that people did from say 8 a.m. until you know, noon when the outage occurred, uh, that effort is gone. So if that's not okay, again, you've got to be able to go in and articulate and define that. If you need to be able to get back to one minute ago or, or you know, one hour ago, you need to know what that point in time that you need to get back to is going to be given this particular system or data. And that's what a recovery point objective can help you go in and identify. Then the last one on this list was TTR. Um, I don't think TTR stands for anything. I just wanted more answer choices, so I made that junk up and put it in there. Uh, I didn't like that the right answers all had three letters and the wrong answers had four, so. All right, boom, boom, two more questions down. I hope you dug them. I'll see you soon.